All right. It looks like we're up and recording. Just a second. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go. <clears throat> what I wanted to do, since we're at the halfway mark, we're actually going to uh, chapter nine, right? So we're moving into the second half of the lessons. <clears throat> So going back, I don't know if there's, well, I should, should say I, I do now, I'm guessing, as we've learned somewhat, that there is uh, a method to the, um, or reason why, reasons why, uh, the lessons are set, or the principles are set up as they are. I, I, I say they're chapters, they are chapters, but uh, lessons as well. Uh, this is a book full of chapters of lessons, right? So <clears throat> start out mastermind. That's nothing more. I mean, you can, you can make this as formal and as informal as you want. Mastermind is just gathering people of like minds. Uh, those who are at least equal to, to you, if not better, in, in knowledge, experience, understanding, maybe intelligence level, insight level, right? So pe people you admire, and it doesn't doesn't have to be. They they I think the suggestion in the text, and I I do most of these things my own way. As I said, I don't teach these lessons as they're taught by Hill. Um, I kind of uh, mix and match and you have used them over the years according to how I see fit, right? Um, so mastermind, nothing nothing more than gathering people of a like mind, at least equal or better in those various categories I mentioned. Um, and, you know, it could be people, people you know, or it could be people you don't know, people who are um, advanced in their fields. So the book suggests, and I've heard other suggestions say that, you know, you try to contact these people and, you know, maybe you say, you know, I mean, I'm talking about people who are probably very successful themselves and probably would tell most people, if you contacted them, you know, take a hike. I'm, I'm busy, you know. Um, but some some have worked to contact people who are hard to get a hold of, and I've I've masterminded with. Uh, there's this one woman in, um, oh, um, Arizona. She I, I I forget how I contacted these people, but she's a, a serial entrepreneur. She mostly works, or I think exclusively works with women, maybe not exclusively, but mostly works with, with women entrepreneurs. And she's built like nine, 10, 11 businesses, built them and sold them, right? Um, <clears throat> and I've contacted her. She's a, a source. She's given me a, a reference, you know, uh, for what I do. There's another person I contacted. He's a speaker. He's part magician, part speaker, part motivational. I also have a friend, a former roommate, uh, who used to do, uh, he has, he's got like a PhD in mathematics from UCLA, but he, nevertheless, he earns his living by uh, performing as a juggler comedian on cruise ships. Make, makes, makes, make, made good money. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but anyways, that's, that's back when I was in my comedy mode, stand-up mode. Um, <clears throat> and I've met some of his friends actors and actresses who work in the business on a regular basis. Uh, you might not recognize some, but you'll recognize the people that they work with, the movies they've been in, you know, playing lesser roles and whatnot. Um, you know, uh, but there, there's that. And I, I've met uh, another person who is uh, like an event organizer, top tier event organizer and all these kind of high achievers. And I've, I contacted them, not so much for masterminds specifically, but more for references. But I've also spoken to them and, and read their stuff. But 
again, you can you can you can you can join the mastermind groups or mentoring groups. Uh, there's one Mark Victor Hansen. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's um, uh, I guess I guess I don't know. I guess, I guess he's still around. Again, I haven't been in contact with these people for some time. So when I was just starting out my business, and um, he's he does chicken soup for the soul, chicken soup for the college student, chicken soup for whatever, right? And he's sold lots of books, and he's got a partner. I forgot his name, but he's they're both in the uh, high achievement field, and um, I I worked with him for a while intimately. I, I go to these small mastermind meetings and there's maybe you know 30 40 people there and i've spoken to him many times and i've gone to some of the seminars in person and spoken to him and got up on stage and stuff and i've done my own presentations i did one in some in uh, vegas and la and other other areas and whatnot um so you could you could do that you know that's a cool thing a definite key fame is not, nothing more than a goal a specific goal to figure out, you know, shoot for something. You don't necessarily have to nail it down to specifically where you're going to go and make it a very rigid path to that goal. Uh, you'll find that most of the time you have to shoot, then aim. Shoot means get going and then aim, adjust as you move forward, that type of thing. Right? And and a lot of these, a lot of these principles do build on each other, right? And in order to, to achieve your uh, main goal, which You'll get help from your mastermind group or mastermind sources. Sometimes it could just be, um, you know, books you read. And that's what I did. I read a lot of books by these high achievers or webinars or seminars you attend or maybe webinars or seminars you give, you know, and you meet people and bring people in. I've, I've had a radio show and I've had some of these like, oh, the um, I've had on my radio show the former Miss Alex Trebek. She was married to Alex Trebek. I don't know if he's still around. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I think I worked. I worked for her actually. I was doing some. Uh, I was doing some temporary work. Since I worked in the computer, I was doing some computer-oriented stuff. Work for her for you know on a temp basis. Um, and I, I knew her and became associated with her and you know her, her husband um i never met him but i you know I, I knew about him uh and there's kind of some other connections that i have there uh but in order to in, in order to accomplish anything you have to have self-confidence you can have a mastermind and specific goals now you need stuff in place right self-confidence is one thing initiative and leadership um even if you're not going to set out on your own you're not going to be an entrepreneur you're going to be working for someone, same thing. You still have to have a certain level of initiative. You know, like my dad used to say, you know, if you want a job and there's no job out there, create one, right? Or if you're working somewhere and there's no place to go, uh, create a job, you know, some some need, fill some need, some niche, niche, niche that the employer uh, needs filled, right? And, you know, bring it to them, suggest, and all that stuff, right? Um. So initiative and leadership, that's that's pretty essential. You know, um, if you if you don't have initiative, at least, um, you know, how, how you're gonna stay in one place. And after what if you if you're treading water, you, you you're either growing, as is said, and this is said about your personal life, your professional life, and your maybe your relationships, you're either growing or dying, right? You're either going up or down. You really can't. It's tough. It's difficult to just tread water too long in one place. You have to be doing, you know, you're either going up or down. And most of the time, in order to keep living and moving forward, you want to go up. And sometimes, not necessarily up, a parallel like that uh, woman I know, the serial entrepreneur. She, you know, she would, she really enjoyed building a business, making it successful, and then selling it because that was her goal. Uh, not to just stay in it and maintain it, but the thing that she enjoyed was the building of it, right? And then maybe she got tired of that after a while and said, you know what? I've done this enough, made enough money. I think I'm going to do something else, maybe parallel or maybe a step up or two. I don't know, whatever, however you want to describe it. And she says, I'm going to, um, you know, write some books and do some webinars and seminars and help other women become successful. 
entrepreneurs, right? That. So an imagination, you know, in order to um, achieve anything, uh, to get anything done, to problem solve, and that's what the imagination is about, you know, problem solving, creating solutions. And the the greatest money earners are those that come up with the best solutions, right? Um, it could be a program, it could be technology, it could be some type of uh, technique used in the medical field. Um, it could be writing a book, it could be writing a screenplay, I don't know, whatever people are in need of that fills a, a, a gap or you know an opening, right? Um, enthusiasm comes from probably following a, a goal that you're really interested in. And in doing so, you get excited and you naturally want to do better. So you build self-confidence. And as you're problem solving, you build an imagination and all that stuff, doing what you really like to do and, and following that path and building more uh, confidence in it and all that that's going on, right? It creates enthusiasm. Uh, but you've got to, in order to do things for the long term, you need some self-control, some discipline, right? And then we get, we've come to habit of doing more. So that's where we are now, right? So I just wanted to take a little bit of a step back. Let me uh, look here. All right. Oops. Did it go? Oh, it did. Okay. So well, let's take a look at that. There are 10 weaknesses against which most of us must guard ourselves. One of these is the habit of trying to reap before we have sown. And the other nine are all wrapped up in the one practice of creating alibis to cover every mistake we made. I don't know about that. Nine being the number there, but uh, to cover those mistakes. Um, interesting number, but um, true, right? You've got weaknesses. Oftentimes it's very difficult very difficult i know it's difficult you know it's difficult to uh be uh you know singled out to to be notified of your errors your mistakes your shortcomings and so forth right it's difficult especially if it's true right and you got caught you know you've made a mistake or maybe you overstepped your bounds of what you uh, said or have done uh whatever right and that's that's painful, right? Um, you know, even even family matters. It could be in family matters. It could be in professional life, right? It could be in the community. What you're doing in the community, working with people, you know, church or community organizations, whatever they are. That's that's a tough one. True. Ten weaknesses. I don't know what the nine are. The other nine are all wrapped up. I don't know why nine, why that number, but anyways. Um. <clears throat> It may seem to be a departure from the subject of this lesson to start the lesson with a discussion of love, but if you will re reserve type of your, your opinion until you have completed the lesson, you may be ready to agree that the subject of love could not have been omitted without impairing the value of the lesson. Now, the thing with these lessons is that, as I said, there's a lot of material here. I go through a good portion of it. I mean, I spend probably an hour or so on each one of these lessons. But that's, I'm just doing a very cursory uh, look or overview of what the lesson, the lessons are about, right? I'm not really going that deep. But if you really wanna learn these lessons, you probably have to read through the book at least once, twice, three times, maybe taking notes, annot annotating, putting little notes in the book or maybe on a piece, <laughs> piece of paper, excuse me. Um, but then you've got to uh, apply these in the real world, right? And maybe you need some outside assistance or help. That's why I said, you know, you might want to contact people who uh, teach teach these lessons. I don't know if there's anybody out, out there specifically who, go, who, te who teaches them all, you know, one through 16 in that particular order uh, exclusively, you know. I know there are a lot of people out there in the achievement world in the get or done world, right? That know about Napoleon Hill and these principles, but I don't know if there's anyone out there that you know knows knows them all. 
and teaches them all, you know, one through another, like the hill is doing here. Anyways, uh, if you'll reserve opinion, you may be ready to agree that the subject of love could not have been omitted without impairing the value of the lesson. The word love here is used in an all embracing sense. There are many objects, motives, and people uh, which arouse one's love nature. There's some work which we do not like, some that we do like moderately, and under certain conditions, there may be work that we actually love, right? True. Um, I worked initially while well, I went to college, and then it yeah, it wasn't wasn't happening. I didn't know what I wanted to do, or I didn't find any particular purpose uh, served by attending college, at least the first or second try. I was still in my early 20s. So my dad said, you know, you're pretty good with um, logic and math. Why don't you try programming? Get a certificate in programming, go out there, do it. And that's, that's how I got into computer field, just kind of happenstance, you know. And I got the certificate, didn't get a job directly. First job I got was um, putting reports, computer reports into boxes or into there, you know, this is back when uh, the, uh, the IBM mid mid range and they used to have these huge printouts, you know, like this wide and this tall, and uh, we'd uh, print them out in the back. You know, the programs would run, and then the printouts of the steps or the routines in those programs would be printed out in this big green and white paper, and we would just get piles and piles, boxes and boxes of papers, and then we would distribute them. There were all these. Um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, mailboxes, I guess, informal mailboxes we throw them into for the uh, people at that building. But then there were also buildings that the boxes would have to be shipped to, and then they'd be shipped to those buildings. That's all I did. I was like a, you know, kind of not even a computer operator, just a, I think what they called me, distributor or something. I don't know what it was. Uh, paper program dis distributor. Then I moved into operations, and then I moved into to to a senior operator, where I was in control of running all the jobs at night, and making sure that they all ran together and ran at a certain time, and you know data was fed in and stuff was printed out, and jobs were working together and started at the right time and intertwining all the jobs and doing all the necessary steps and being responsible for that. Then I got into programming. I got into mid range programming. Oh no, sorry, I did des desktop desktop or kind of like a help desk stuff you know helping people with their printers and their the desktop software and uh putting cartridges ink cartridges in their printers all you know all the uh help desk stuff you know um and then i then i got into programming a mid-range ibm rpg3 programming uh i was on a systems 38 and as 400 this is probably i don't even know if these things these systems are around anymore it's a mid-range. It's not micro. It's not mainframes, but it's a mid-range system. So I did that for a while. Did I love it? No. Not at all. Then, then I got to do the um, uh, stand-up and did that for about five, six years. Did I love that? Nope. <laughs> then I got into teaching. Did I love that? It seemed to be that was the place. I felt when I started teaching and I was hanging out with all these nerds, that really like to uh, talk intellectual stuff, philosophize, analyze, infer, deduce, use critical thinking, logic, and so forth. They're doing a lot of research and blah, 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 all that stuff. And trying to understand the intricacies of their particular discipline or disciplines and the relationships they're in within a discipline or discipline to discipline, right? Um, and that was cool. You know, that was cool. And that, that, that kept me going for quite a few years, but then I moved away from that. I began to see, that's how I got to do this. I began to see there's a real problem with education. Education, uh, bottom to top is messed up. And there's a lot of problems. So I love that. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, almost, almost maybe. But it wasn't until I started doing this as, as an entrepreneur, as a coach, right? This, this was it. And I started doing this. Love is when you're just doing something you want to do all the time. So I'd wake up and I'd do it all day. And then I'd go to bed and I was, you know, you get up and just start and do it again. And did that for years and years, right? So that's why he's talking about long-winded 
example or just an explanation there. Great artists, for example, generally love their work. The day laborer, on the other hand, usually only dislikes his work, right? But may actually hate it. Work which one does merely for the sake of earning a living, seldom liked. More often it is disliked or even hated, right? And I've heard people say, well, it doesn't really matter what you do. Just make good money. You got to pay bills. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, but the problem is you're human. Uh, you're, you're made of emotions. Uh, you've got a heart. You have blood coursing through your veins. You're not a machine. And things affect you. And if you're doing something that you're really not into year after year after year after year, it's going to get to you. And you're going to quit or get depressed and fired. Start doing a crappy job. And it's one or the other. Right? You're either going to get fired if you stay too long or and I've been there. <laughs> stay too long or um, you know, you're going to quit. Right. So that's that's why you've got to get this this stuff down. And one of the things you got to work on first and foremost is Briggs Myers test, typology test, figure out who you are, right? Get that really down, pat, and then figure out how you can apply who you are to a particular goal or a specific chief aim, right? And then start building from there. What do I need to do in order to achieve my goal of being a fill in the blank? Do I need to read books? Do I need to go to seminars and webinars? Do we need, need to take classes? Do I need to get a degree? It, it all varies, right? Get a certificate. Do I want to be an EMT, a computer programmer? Uh, and I, I was able to be a computer programmer with just a one-year certificate certificate. And there are many people in the field that I met who didn't have any college and just learned it on the job like me. You know. um, when engaged in work, which he loves, a man may labor for unbelievably long periods of hours, right? Without fatigue. That was me. I get up, I would have to go teach. But in between, before classes, in between classes, after classes, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there was usually, I usually wasn't teaching on Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would just love to sit at the computer and, and you know, I've written nine books. I've created um, programs. I've created uh, web pages, uh, you know, a social media presence. And a lot of research, a lot of working through ideas, written books, fiction, uh, mostly uh, nonfiction. I do have one science fiction fantasy, but uh, most most of them are nonfiction and a book of poetry. But seven seven of the nine are nonfiction, basically related to this topic, subject matter, well, which is a part of my business, right? Anyway, a man's endurance, therefore, depends very largely on the extent to which he or she, this, whenever you see he, just put them or whatever, yeah, hey, fill in the fill in the pronoun, dislikes or loves that which blank is doing. We are here laying the foundation, as you will, of course, observe for the statement of one of the most important laws of this philosophy, vis-a-vis, -vis. you know what vis mean, V-I-Z, look that up. A man is most efficient will more quickly and easily succeed when engaged in work that he loves or work that he performs in behalf of some other person whom he loves. There it is. Because if you're constantly grinding, you know, you constantly grind and you have to work against joy or maybe discontent, work, work against discontent, I guess, even, right? It, it it becomes a grind, you know, and I've worked in, I, I was working in a job while I was working on my uh, mas master's degree, I think master's, and, and undergrad. Um, yeah, it was undergrad, I'm sorry, uh, last couple of years, year and a, two, two and a half years of my undergrad, and uh, there were some times I was working that job, I would go, I, I would feel inside just dead. And, and it's funny because I worked at a mortuary for two and I was a, like a bookkeeper you know, uh, for this corporate mortuary and uh, inside just dead, dead sometimes. And I'm going, man, this is, man, I am like totally depressed. How, how could you ever, you know, go uh, continue doing something that, you know, you shouldn't be doing? 
a Swedish gentleman from Minnesota. So now he's giving um, examples here. When a person, well, 1928, women just did get the vote in 1920. So uh, back then, not a lot of women in the workforce. And that didn't change much until World War II, uh, when, you know, most men were off uh, fighting the war in Europe and in the South Pacific. And uh, so who, who was to do the jobs? Rosie Riveter, right? Rosie Riveter and her uh, mates, women. That's when women really started to um, <clears throat> come into the workforce. And 20s, right to vote, tw 20s, 30s, started to go to college uh, and be begin to get will be accepted in it as a colleges to receive education in institutions of higher learning. All right. So therefore you see man here, because in most cases that was that's what, what it was back then. Right? So now you can say, but a person is engaged in work that that person loves, no hardship for him or her to do more work, better work than that for which he or she is paid. And for this very reason, every person so you don't want to keep saying he or she. Every person owes it to themselves to do their best to find the sort of work they like best, right? Um, this seems to be an appropriate place to interject a little personal history. So now he's giving you more support, but it's not um, an example uh, of someone, maybe he knows this Swedish gentleman, uh, maybe he doesn't, right? But anyways, then he gives a personal anecdote. You can have personal testimonies, you can have professional testimonies, uh, you can have your own testimonies, testimonies of family and friends, testimonies of experts, testimonies of uh, people in, in the field that you know, those that you don't know, those who are famous, those who are not famous. However, it works to support uh, the, the point you're making, right? So, He goes on combating them and says, friends, these personal references me. Let me go. My wife's idea was that I should accept the salary position. So he, he's going through. And this is a good example, but again, I'm I don't have time. I'm I'm spending probably an hour close to a little more close to an hour, hour a little more on each of these chapters as it is. So I don't want to read. It's a good example, good story. And he makes some very uh, good points in here, but again, um I don't want to go through it, you know, go through this for hours and hours, right? Uh I was for time, nothing else. So this is a very long um explanation. I actually think there's a couple of uh, stories or points that he's making here. Right. Among the other things you intend to cut out in your New Year's resolution include the word impossible. True. Um, conceive, believe, achieve. And oftentimes many have said the believe part is the hardest. I've got a goal. I've conceived it. To achieve it, I have to believe. But do I really believe it? How much do I believe it? Does does my belief get shaken? And probably all our beliefs get shaken at some time, especially if you go to a long term goal. You know, even going off to college, something a little less um, open ended, right, and challenging. I, I think you would say than starting your own business or going off to be an actor uh, or actress, actor, actress, right? or you know. Uh, songwriter or lyricist or book writer, novelist, you know, um, an entrepreneur, a politician, you know, you're not working for someone with a steady paycheck in those situations, right? So impossible, some, some, many would say that's impossible. I want to be an NBA star. I want to be a successful musician. I want to be a successful dancer, author, 
a little hard, you know. Um, you know, if you if you it's it's up to you. In the people who have thought impossible, now nah, not gonna happen. And then the people said, screw that, I'm just gonna go for it. I know I can do it. And kept going and going, gone. Some have done it, some a lot have failed, but some have actually done it because they did take that word out of their uh vocabulary, right? He's got a very long. Oh, this is the final. We got a good point here, or a principle. I guess we can read through. The absurdity of it all came over me like a flash. The philosophy of success, created and broadcasted by a man <clears throat> who was obviously obviously a failure. This thought struck me so forcibly that I expressed it in words. What? Uh, Mellon exclaimed, "What a failure! What?" A failure? Surely you know the difference between failure and temporary defeat. No person is a failure who creates a single idea, much less an entire philosophy that serves to soften the disappointments and minimize the hardships and gener generations yet unborn, right? And uh, goes on and on. Despite the fact that my par partner was assassinated, well, I forgot about that story. Um, as this lesson is ready to go to the publisher, some of the following well-known concerns are considering favorable the purchase of the Law of Success course for all their employees, while others have actually arranged for the purchase of this course, course, right? So this is what, you don't have to read the, that example to see why or how this directly relates to the story um, he was conveying, right? But Basically, it's a, a story of believing, conceive, believe, achieve, right? And he kept he, he just kept going. You know, I, I read about the um the making of Pixar. Pixar, you know, the movie making or movie movie publishing creating company. And man, they went through some massive challenges, you know. Most highly successful companies. Um, go through some massively challenging situations, right? Um, Standard Oil, New York Life Insurance. So these these are big big name companies, right? Cadillac Motor Car Company, right? So there was something in here. It was, it was so it was. It doesn't matter, you know. Like if you want to be successful in promoting marketing your business, there's certain things you can do, and there's a lot of suggestions about what you can do. But basically, you've got to have something. You gotta have something, something of you know something that's different first and foremost, something that stands out, something of great merit, import, purpose, impact, right? Something you know something so good that people go. And I, I've had people say to me, like uh, one of the um, uh, it was the chair of one department said, "Jeff, you're smarter than me. Just do what you want." You know, uh, another chair was it the dean? I think she was the chair, chair or dean. Uh, said, and she was interviewing me for a uh, teaching position, uh, which turned out to be temporary because I didn't want to work there. I'm, a, I'm an adjunct. I'm an adjunct for a reason because I don't, I want to find, I, I'm shopping basically for a job, getting paid while I'm looking for a good job, right? And eventually I settled down on two or three colleges, but I've worked at like maybe nine, 10, 11, right? Some for one semester, short semester, five weeks, some for a year, two years, three years, whatever. But it finally boiled down to those that serve my purposes best. And now that's all pretty much come to an end. So I'm trying to um, untie myself from those obligations and just be independent and do this, right? So you, you'll know, you'll feel it as you go forward. You know, it's time to do this, it's time to do that, right? Um, Perhaps it is unnecessary, but I wish to explain that my only object in here relating the story, so instead of reading the whole story, this is what I'm talking about, getting to the principles or the abstract, the um, you know, general explanations of the why. Right? Wish to explain that my only object in here relating the story of how the law of success philosophy is gained the recognition described is to show 
how the law upon which this lesson is based actually works out in the practical affairs of life. If I could have made this analysis without the use of the personal pronoun, I would have done so, right? Works out. Well, it worked out with him. That's anecdotal evidence, right? But again, a lot of what he has in the lesson, you know, lessons uh, did seem to apply to a lot of people. And you can just, you see these companies, right? New York Life Insurance, Standard Oil Company, right? Postal Telegraph Commercial Cable Company, back, you know, when they had the telegraphs, right? Um, Pierce Arrow, I don't know that, Cadillac, Mar so those are, right, Indian, Indian Refining Company, right? Those, those are big Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Company. Um, so those, those are big name companies. So there's obviously something of great import impact and merit in what he has here, right? So it works, right? So either you got it or you don't. Figure it out. There are two reasons, however, for rendering such services which transcend in, in importance all the others. <clears throat> so these are the basic reasons why, or the how, how to's. By establishing a reputation as being a person who always renders more service. And that's what the chapter's about. Therefore, why he gave that example, person example. And better service than that for which you are paid, you will benefit by a comparison with those around you who do not render such service. And the contrast will be so noticeable that there will be keen competition for your services, no matter what your life work may be, right? Second, by far the most important reason why you should render more services. So here it is. This is the big key right here. So he's going from least to most important, right? There's an organization. There's a reason for organizing your, your thoughts, your explanations, your books, your chapters, your memos, your speeches, your lectures. Right, put them in a particular order that's most effective to the point or the purpose that you're trying to try, the point you're trying to make and the purpose behind uh, the point you're trying to make. Most important reason you should render more service than that for which you were paid, a reason that is basic and fundamental in nature, may be described in such a way. Suppose that you wish to develop a strong right arm, and suppose that you try to do so by trying the arm, tying the arm to your side with a rope, thus making taking out of use and giving it a long rest. Would disuse bring strength or would it bring atrophy, weakness, resulting in finally in your being compelled to have the arm removed, right? You know that if you wish a strong arm, you should develop such an arm only by giving it the hardest sort of use. Therefore, why you pro probably want to take on a lot of challenges, right? Get out of your comfort zone. Um, almost... Almost every time I've gotten out of my comfort zone, um, it has helped me to improve in some way. It's limited a weakness. It's opened me up to some understanding, eye-opening, revelatory understanding that has become essential to my being, my understanding of my existence and relationship to others, whatever it is, right? Those insights and those concepts and those principles become golden, priceless golden nuggets. Take a look at the arm of the blacksmith if you wish to know how an arm may be made strong. Out of resistance comes strength, right? And this is similar to what uh, Ching Ning Chu, Thick Face Black Heart, says. You know, um, no one has been has gotten better uh, by requiring less of themselves or by encountering fewer trying circumstances, right? Basically, good point there. And you know, this comes up if you read you know, experts in these fields, you, you see these principles come up time and time again, again and again, right? If you're an employee, so here, you don't have to be an entrepreneur or a business owner, right? You can make yourself so valuable through this habit. And that's what I did. I said, I'm going to be a teacher. Do I just want to, you know, take the bare minimum courses? And as teachers, every semester, you're supposed to brush up on your knowledge by taking some courses every semester, you know, maybe a few hours here and there. And I said, is that all I want to do? I said, no. That might be 100%, but I want to go ballistic. Not 200, 500,000, but go crazy, go nuts, go ballistic. So that's when I started to sit down and look at 
numerous disciplines. I said, what, what is what is this? What are these, I should say, uh, disciplines about? Why math? Why science? Why economics? Right? Why theology? Why philosophy? Why have these um, disciplines right, been developed over the years? Just for fun, something interesting to flap your gums about. You know? And then I started to see individually and collectively what what it, it not all about, but what it, they they're about to, to a great degree. And man, in being able to uh, teach people, uh, creating insight and understanding not only for myself but for others, making connections, connecting the dots, right? Like um, there's the basic. Um, if you if you go to science, abstract. Uh, physics right Stephen Hawking Stephen Hawking says uh, we explain existence by using uh, subatomic theory quantum theory and theory of relativity so theory of relativity large scale quantum theory small scale uh, the math for both work independently but when you're trying to put the maths together they don't mesh so that's why they try to come up with a string theory to tie them both together then Stephen Hawking said if we uh, come up with a string theory, then we will know the mind of God, even though he didn't believe in God, or didn't. He's, I think he's dead now, so maybe he's with God, and God's explaining things to him. But uh, anyways, so he said, we'll know where we came from, why we're here, where we're going. So science is kind of like pseudo-religion, right? <laughs> it's kind of a pseudo-religion, not really, because science is based in empirical data, factual data, got to taste it, touch it, smell it, see it, right? Data. And religion is about faith, belief in things not seen, right? So they're a little different, a little different categories. Uh, but anyways, so Stephen Hawking said that, but some people said string theory is not even wrong, meaning it's not even useful, right? Not even wrong. Only in physics, would you hear statements like that? Not even wrong. Um, boggles the mind. But anyways, um, and then there was a uh, oh man, I got a, a uh, concessions of consilience. A but Harvard biology professor. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. Just. Uh, There is the unity of knowledge. E. O. Wilson. Oh, wait, what is it? Consilience. Yes, let's go. Second, second. Yeah, it's a book. The unit is the unity of knowledge. Can you see that? Right. Concession, concessions of consilience, the unity of knowledge as well. Concessions of silk consilience. That's the concept in the book. Consilience, the unity of knowledge, Edward O. Wilson. And I read that. It's a, a written by a, a Harvard biology professor. Five star reviews, got five stars. Oh, five reviewers from this website. Uh, but it's it's about um, theory of unity, unification, right? Um, they're, they're science scientists are trying to find a, 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 an explanation, right? It's kind of like pseudo religion, you know? Why? Where do we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? Right? mind of God. But we won't talk about God. We'll talk about science and through abstract concepts and principles, right? Um, so he says in that book, it's weird. He says if if there's an answer, then that answer will lie throughout all the various disciplines. Right? I'm going, what? You know, so you're going to go to accounting and economics and mathematics and philosophy and theology and all the, all the, you know, the answer of why we're here, where we're, we're, 
where we came from, why we're here, where we're going. A thread exists throughout all of these disciplines that will explain or answer that question. Weird stuff, but this is what the brainiacs are working on. You know, it's interesting, interesting to see. I mean, and I, I don't know all the particulars. I can't understand any of the math whatsoever. And just like I, I went to see um, Alan Newell uh, at a, a friend of mine went to um, Trinity College back east, majored in, um, oh, what was it? Computer science and religion. Something like that. Just one of those re really totally nerd, nerdy brainiac guys, right? Um, and we went up to Harvard and listened to him talk about artificial intelligence way back, like 30, 40 years ago, maybe. Right? Alan Alan Newell. Oh, wait, I got to think. Sorry, I know I'm using the phone too much. Alan Newell, AI. Here we go. It's been a long time. I'm surprised that I remember all this stuff. Yeah, Alan Newell. Pioneering AI scientist, uh, turning award winner. Is he still with us? Oh, he died in 1992. So I guess I saw him speak before that. Yeah, that was back in the 80s, I think. Wow, long time ago. Yes, old head. Anyways, let's move forward. Personally, I never received a promotion in my life that I could not trace directly to recognizing that I had gained by rendering more service and better service than that for which I was paid. Going above and beyond the call of duty, that's pretty much it, right? And that's the lesson. And I can go into a lot of detail and talk about it, but that's, I think, I think um, you understand that. The law of increasing returns. Let's begin our analysis by showing how nature employs this law. Let's not, you can read this on your own, right? Um, Ultimately, nothing matters not very much. It sounds like um, something that I would really read. And believe. There was there was a story that came out one time, and it said, um, and it was written by the guy that does documentaries. It was called um, Dirty Works, like on PBS or something. I forget the guy's name, Dirty Works. Um, and he um, had a short video titled, Don't Follow Your Passion. I see something like that, I go, oh, I gotta see that, right? Remember I said, if you um, see everybody doing something, saying something, going one way, just go, look over there, right? A lot, a lot of people are over there, especially if it's been going on for some time, they've been saying it, doing it, thinking it for some time, yeah, it's just a bunch of dodo birds, right? They're not thinking, they're just following, right? But the person who came over here, but that guy who said, don't follow your passion, I'm going, wow, that's, maybe you're thinking just right off the bat, he's probably got some additional insight and thinks in such a different way that he would probably uh, have something of merit or value to say, right? But like a lot of the very successful people whose stuff I read, you know, talks about things off the beaten path, right? Anyways, nothing from management. The defeat that seems to break your heart today will be a ripple among the waves of other experiences in the ocean of your life further ahead. True. The stuff that I've gone through and come through, it's a lot. Let's see if I want to see anything else. To love praise, but not worship it, and fear condemnation, but not go down under it, is evidence of a well-balanced personality, and that's how it's done, right? You you, sh you you might love praise, but you're not looking for it, right? You might fear condemnation, but when you get it, it doesn't break you. See what I'm saying? So everything in moderation, everything in balance, you have to have a certain level of strength in here built up and acquired over time by doing the necessary stuff, the things that you need to do, getting out of yourself, taking on the challenges and the difficulty and going into the dirt and the muck and the mire and the difficulty and the scary and the fearful and prove to yourself. You don't need other people going, hey, better respect me, you're weak. If you have enough respect, you don't have to think about it. And instead of asking for respect, you respect others and give service. 
Man, that's powerful. Asking for respect, forcing respect, that's total weakness. And that's what bullies are. They're coming from total uselessness, useless weakness, right? There's nothing empowering about it. They're not even empowering themselves. They're disempowering, disenfranchising themselves, bringing themselves down and everybody around them. That's pure evil, that's darkness. Go to the light. What are you doing there? Why are you lying, backstabbing, seeking revenge, gossiping? Blech. Blech. Yuck, right? Uh, let's see, do I wanna? Let's, let's read some of the italicized stuff. You have the good judgment to make yourself so useful that the person to whom you sell your services cannot get along without you. And that's, that's true to the greatest degree, degree, right? Or you'll be left alone, or left, left to your um, own judgment, be your own boss. And that's how I worked as an adjunct for 22 years. I get a uh, assignment and I would just do it remarkably well and get really good uh, feedback from my students to me. And it would go back to the uh, administrators and um, they're like, well, would you like to keep working for us? And then they just throw classes at you every semester. And you, I, I, I really, I rarely would see the various chairs or people in the office. I just come on campus, go to my classroom, teach. So I was like, I was like a um, kind of like an entrepreneur even then, you know, when I was just doing adjunct work. The educated man is the man person who has learned how to get everything that person needs without violating the rights of fellow humans. Education comes within. There you go, within, right? You get it by struggle and effort and thought. Yes. It's not easy, it's hard, it's difficult, it's sweaty, it's work. Be prepared to do the work, right? And some people say, you know, you need to work hard, work hard, work. If you're working, just working hard all your life, you're an idiot, don't be an idiot. Uh, at some point you have to figure it out so that you make it easier uh, and you become more productive and things flow better, right? And also you, you free up the things that you already know how to do for others to do. Uh, and then you do stuff that's more important or challenging, right? Or more significant, right? As you move forward, right? Uh, let's see, the person who sows a single beautiful thought in the mind of another renders, there it is, right? Positive stuff. Renders the world a greater service than the rendered by all the fault finders combined, right? That, and I say a similar thing um, about um, you know, challenges. Uh, a person who goes through a difficult time and, and um, comes out the other end is learning more about themselves in compassion, discipline, self-control, blah, 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 than all, then you would learn from yourself and all the trips to all the theme parks all your life, right? What's essential? What's of merit? What works? What do you need to know? What doesn't work? What's useless? What's dark? What's degrading? What's life sucking, right? What's life reinforcing? Go to the light, go to the light. No person can rise to fame and fortune without carrying others along. I, I've read that one before, haven't I? Or am I just teaching the same old lesson? So I think, I think we're done with this, right? Here's the master mastermind again. And then moving on to, Again, I mean, I can go over this till the end of time. So next time, lesson 10, pleasing personality. That sounds interesting. See you then.